Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. I will uh, going to speak about this article uh, called "Host Microbe Interactions and the Behavior of C. Elegans." Well, um, I found this study interesting. Do it shows how the behavior of the nematode is influenced by metabolites that. Um, are generated from microorganisms that are a food source and that may be pathogens. The natural environment of C. elegans has revealed a community of proteobacteria, uh, bacteri bacteroides, firmicutes, and actinobacteria that are in close associations with these nematodes. Um, however, exist bacteria such as Bacillus thuringiensis uh, that produce a crystal or forming toxin that is highly toxic uh, to C. elegans upon ingestion. Mm. Regarding uh, innate uh, recognition, behaviors such as feeding, defecations, laying, and locomotion are affected by the presence of a bacteria to the lactic molecules produced for this and use how feeding cues. C. elegans also detects molecules that enable discrimination uh, among specific bacterial species. Uh, C. elegans also exhibit chemostatic response to autoinducer molecules produced by Pseudomona originosa and Vibrio cola that mediate form sensing. Comprehensive analysis for of sensory response in C. elegans have revealed at least uh, 10 classes, classes of sensory neurons that respond to nutritive E. coli supernatant. Here, uh, you can see a behavioral response to bacteria unfold over multiple time scales. C. elegans consume diverse uh, bacteria that differ in their nutritive qualities and their pathogenicity. Innate uh, recognition of bacteria allows animals to generate rapid behavioral, behavioral responses uh, to bacterial odors and textures. After bacteria are ingested, uh, animals undergo internal state uh, changes that underlie long lasting behavioral change. This uh, long lasting change includes alternations on their foraging strategies and learned change in bacterial preference. While feeding uh, on E. coli OP50, C. elegans alternate between activity active uh, roaming states and inactive uh, dwelling states in which they either explore or exploit their fo food source respectively. Uh, the proportions of time that silicons spend in roaming versus dwelling states is control controlled by uh, satiety levels, chemosensory inputs, and internal sensing of bacterial food ingestion. Uh, the, the behavior response of C. elegans animals to microbial cues in their environment really on the innate recognition of a vast and diverse set of bacterial sensory cues. Uh, behavioral response to these molecular and chemosensory cues are influenced by experience and, um, and context and doing C. elegans uh, with a great deal of flexibility in how it responds and adapts uh, to its microbial environment. Uh, these studies uh, of host micro interactions of, in C. elegans may ultimately uh, inform our understanding of how microbes impact nervous system functions uh, in more complex uh, animals. And that is all, thank you. Hi everyone, 
uh, I'm going to be sharing this paper. Engineering nanowire mediated cell lysis for microbial cell identification. So uh, here, the authors propose a nanowire mediated lysis method for microbial cells by introducing a rupture approach initiated by cell membrane stretching, meaning that the nanowires do not penetrate the membrane. So uh, they use uh, Bacillus utilis and Escherichia coli as a typical example for gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. The gram-positive bacteria have strong resistivity to physical damage due to the thick peptidoglycan layer and the gram-negative bacteria due to their outer membrane. So the cells were introduced by capillary force into the nanowires in a microchannel, but they were not ruptured. After applying an electrode field of 500 volt per centimeter, the nanowires exhibited a DNA extraction. The present nanowire mediated lysis has uh, three main steps. The first step is absorbing cells onto the nanowires, and this was evaluated by the antibacterial test showing that si silicon di dioxide and tin oxide, uh, which are the materials that the nanowire shell and the cold materials are made of, had good bacteria compatibility and that the silicon dioxide enhanced uh, bacteria absorption. So the second step is uh, entangling cells with the nanowires. They saw that nanowire flexibility, or in this case, the diameter, had an effect on bacteria entanglement. The 30 nanometers diameter nanowires easily deformed their structure by sticking to the bacteria, while the 110 nanometer diameter nanowires did not structurally deform because of their uh, mechanical stability. They finally, the third step was uh, stretching the cell membrane and it was evaluated by monitoring the fluorescence intensity of labeled DNA molecules, showing that external driving forces like applied electric fields could rupture the membrane of the entangled bacteria. They used DNA uh, staining fluorescence molecules, which could not go inside the uh, intact cell, mem cell membrane. They demonstrated that for the applied electrical field of 375 volt per centimeters, the 30 nanometer diameter nanowires could rupture the microbial cell membrane. However, under the same applied electrical field, the 110 nanometer uh, diameter nanowires could not rupture it. Next, they uh, conceived the idea of using flow instead of uh, applied electrical field. The microfluidic device consisted of nanowires on fused silica substrates and a PDMS microchannel with a herringbone structure which can induce cha chaotic mixing flow. So they use a Saccharomyces cervicae as a typical example of yeast cells which have a thick cell walls and nanowire mediated lysis using fluid flow allow them to extract and collect DNA molecules merely by introducing the cells in the device and the extracted amount of DNA has a relationship to the nanowire length. Also, they saw that the density of the nanowires is important to achieve a high performance lysis since densely distributed nanowires cannot deform in this uh, confined space. Furthermore, this led to the idea of uh, incorporating thermal lysis into this device based on the high thermal conductivity of the oxide nanowires. So the nanowires could directly provide thermal energy to the cells during cell absorption, cell entanglement, or both. The thermal energy supplied by the nanowires could denature the cell walls and assist the shear force introduce, induced by the fluid flow, leading to efficient cell rupture. This uh, significantly improved the extraction efficiency of the genomic DNA. And uh, finally, they showed good compatibility of the present nanowire mediated lysis method with DNA amplification and detection for a microbial cell identification. They use a DNA amplification method based on the loop mediated isothermal amplification or LAMP, which uh, could amplify the target genes isothermically. Destructed DNA samples were taken at the nanowire device outlet, and while E. coli cells exhibited the 
green fluorescence color when using the nanowire device at 94 degrees or also using a commercial, commercially available kit. Equal essays show no fluorescence color when using only chaotic mixing on when heating the sample tubes without the nanowire device. So these results highlighted that nanowires were important for efficient microbial cell lysis and that the nanowire device has good compatibility with the lamp method. That will be all, thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Okay, in this case, um, I'm gonna talk this. Uh, I'm gonna talk about this um, uh, paper. Is uh, the title is Design and Validation of Fiber Optic Localized Surface Plasma Resonance Sensor for a Tyroglobulin in Monoacide with High Sensitivity and Rapid Detection. What is the idea? The idea of this paper, of the object of this paper, is try to measure the tyroglobulin. Uh, this tyroglobulin is related uh, uh, with the uh, uh, with a cancer of thyroids uh, that is very common, and they are trying to measure this uh, tyroglobulin uh, with a rapid uh, device, with microfluidic device because in some cases it's difficult to detect the, the amount of this uh, tyroglobulin. Okay, how they do this? Uh, they perform a, a microfluidic device with PDMES, uh, as you see in the, in the left of your screen. Um, and then uh, they use uh, uh, several inlets in order to uh, introduce different reagents one of these is the nanoparticles that reacted with the fiber, uh, this optic fiber uh, that is uh, developed uh, and, um, uh, and use uh, some of these uh, fiber. Uh, they, have, uh, re uh, they have points to react with the nanoparticles and they are able to measure uh, this uh, tyroglobulin. Uh, the microfluidic device is very simple. It's uh, uh, a, a various channels. Uh, there are uh, 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 one uh, uh, one position for the reaction chamber, and then the outlet. And at the end of this, they have the sensor, as I told you, and this sensor have the ability to detect the nanoparticles that are attached to the this uh, uh, tyroglobulin. Okay, we will see the experiments. The first experiment that they perform is uh, measure or, or test the fiber with different uh, ref refractive index. Yeah? They obtain different curves and they uh, normalize the intensity in order to get the, uh, the better fit for this uh, wavelength. And after that, uh, they they use uh, uh, this uh, they they use this scheme in order to understand what happened with this intensity uh, along of the time in the first in the first uh, in the first step uh, they use water uh, for uh, uh, 100 microliters per minute for uh, introduce water uh, uh, around five minutes and then they introduce uh, these uh, nanoparticles uh, with uh, sorry these uh, I, this tyroglobulin and then at the end, these nanoparticles with uh, that we, we attach after at the end uh, with this uh, tyroglobulin. The total time of the experiment is around 14 uh, minutes. Okay. Um, and the most uh, the most important from the author is try to identify the minimum concentration and the maximum concentration because. These concentrations are related with the normal uh, with the uh, uh, normal tests that, that the people perform in the in the clinics in the hospitals, and they are interested to identify what is the uh, the best uh, concentration that they are able to detect 
Uh, for the reason they try different concentrations in order to uh, verify or in order to clarify what is the best uh, concentration that they are able to detect and also what is the maximum and what is the minimum. And uh, also uh, they are interested in compare with different techniques. Uh, they use also this uh, ferritin that is also is a um, is an is another protein that also is related with this uh, hippo with this hippo hippotyroidin uh, because this ferritin is inside of the cells and it's related with hippo hyperthyroidism and hypothyroidism and they also uh, no they don't, they don't find the interactions in the method for this reason uh, they 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 prove or they test with a commercial test. Uh, uh, that is in this uh, figure uh, in the in the axis they have uh, this concentration of Irma this Irma is the uh, commercial test and in the white axis uh, they have uh, their sensor that they use and they found that there are not good correlation because uh, it's, it's not as sensitive as the sensor that they perform for this reason, they conclude that this method is also uh, good for detect uh, uh, these levels of hypothyroid uh, TG related with hypothyroidism, and it's uh, this is the, the final conclusion. Okay, thank you very much. Hi everyone, can you see my screen? Yes, we see. Thank you. So, uh, well, this time I'm going to, to talk about uh, this review, <clears throat> microfluidic systems for uh, microalgae uh, biotechnology. Uh, well, <clears throat> the my, micro microalgae um, have a demonstrated potential as producers of high quality uh, renew renewable uh, biofuel feedstocks as well as other high uh, viable uh, chemicals. Uh, so uh, the improvements for my, from my microalgal <laughs> biology and strain development to downstream processing are required to achieve economic, economically uh, viable microalgae uh, derived uh, biofuels and bioproducts. <clears throat> so the um, microfluidic uh, labon achieved systems, systems can offer a high precision and high efficiency cell region uh, handling capabilities, uh, enable high throughput assays in a fully automated uh, fashion. Uh, as you know, the microalgae uh, have uh, typically uh, characterized by higher photosynthetic efficiency, uh, faster growth rate, and higher oil uh, content compared to other oil producing crops, such as soybean and oil palm, uh, used in the production of second and third uh, generation biofuels. Uh, additional uh, advantages are uh, less water is required that reduce demand on fresh water sources. Uh, another one, minimal competition with uh, food supply and land usage. Uh, despite the, these promising potentials, the production or uh, cost of uh, current microalgae-based uh, biofuels and, <clears throat> and bioproducts remains uh, well above uh, economy, economic uh, viability. So the key processes uh, associated with the production pipeline are strain selection and development, cultivation, harvesting, uh, lipid extraction, and conversion. Here, the micro uh, fabric fabricated uh, devices and 
<coughs> microfluidic glaucoma chip systems can uh, offer attractive alternatives. So first, we have the microsystems for strain uh, selection and strain uh, development. Uh, these, these systems are made to identify uh, better performing microalgal strains through uh, bioprospecting can be one of the, uh, to achieve commercially viable uh, microalgae-based uh, biofuel production. Uh, first, we have the uh, identification. The most traditional method to identify microalgae is uh, through flight uh, uh, microscopy and molecular biology. Uh, one of the microfluidic method used is, is the system, uh, the flow cytometry, that offers potential uh, alternative <coughs> method, enabling uh, on-site microalgae analysis and classification during uh, bioprospecting. Uh, for example, the first microfluidic cell cytometer to analyze and distinguish microalgal cells uh, was capable of measuring chlorophyll autofluorescence of cells uh, uh, flowing through the optical detection zone in a microfluidic channel. One minute left. Okay. Uh, then we have the characterization based on the cell morphology and physiology. For example, uh, one study introduced uh, a microfluidic flow cytometer to assess uh, both uh, photosynthetic characteristics and lipid uh, accumulation of microalgal cells. The chlorophyll uh, autofluorescence intensity, which is potential to uh, chlorophyll content in microalgae is an indicator of photosynthetic capacity and activity in microalgae and can also be used to evaluate cell viability. Uh, for example, uh, one of the, these uh, systems are a microfluidic uh, biosensor de developed by Wang um, to distinguish live and dead cells. And that's it. Uh, the next the next time I will continue with, with this review. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, today I would like to talk about this article, uh, which title is a Development of a Microfluidic Culture Paradigm for Ex Vivo Maintenance of Human Glioblastoma Tissue, a new glioblastoma model. So here in this article, the authors propose a microfluidic device that contains a chamber to culture a tissue that has been um, in, that has been extracted from the patients. So here uh, in this figure, uh, you can see the architecture of the micro device. So it is it comprises two layers of glass, and this uh, glass, uh, the first layer is three millimeters thick and the second layer is one millimeter thick and that one is the the one that has the the micro channels so here you see that the holes have, have already been drilled and um, this has been um, fabricated by a wet a chemical etching and uh, so they have been bonding uh, thermically uh, bonded and here is a PDMS layer that they um, use in order to maintain the gas uh, exchange. So here in the second uh, schematic, you can see that they, they use uh, these uh, Harvard uh, syringe pumps, and that's how they provide the nutrients to the cells and also remove the waste. So um, here you see the, the size of the microfluidic device. Um, and, the, and when it's ensembled with a tubing. So the idea is that they want to, to, to uh, validate if this uh, model uh, could maintain the, the same viability of the cells as, the, as they do uh, as soon as they are extracted from the patient. So they perform um, 
in they measure the viability and also they evaluate the morphological appearances um, comparing the fresh tissue and analyzing the tissue that is cultured in this device. So they perform these uh, tests, the immunohytochemical markers. So they use this proliferation uh, staining, the Ka67, and also the Caspas 3 staining in order to calculate the apoptotic index. Okay, so they measure this uh, average apoptotic index and they saw that um, it is uh, statistically different. Okay, they also um, use the annexing 5 protein and uh, this uh, also the PI, which is the, mm. the dye exclusion test to see to check at necrosis. So here you see the images where they compare. So in the first column, you see the fresh tissue, and in the second column, the tissue that has been cultured inside the device. So here you see the first, um, the proliferate, proliferation staining, and also in blue is the trip and blue, and that labels the, the cells that are dead. And here you see the histochemical, the, uh, also this comparison, uh, and the caspase 3 that uh, marks apoptosis. So here you see the, the index, so to compare the fresh culture and the, um, the fresh tissue, sorry, with the cheap tissue. So here you see that uh, the proliferation assay didn't show a statistically a uh, difference. And the caspase 3, yeah, it's statistically different, OK? So um, then they also, here is the cytometry results from these markers. As I told you, the annexin 5, uh, which is it's a protein that will label which cells have been uh, suffer apoptosis and the PI, uh, the cells that have suffered necrosis. So here we see the the distribution of the cells, and here in these um, in the section C, you see the percentage of cells that have uh, undergone um, this scenario. So the healthy cells are the ones that are negative for annexin and PI. The early apoptosis cells, the ones that are positive for annexin and negative for PI, the late apoptosis, and finally necrosis. So and in, they also measure the um, this uh, enzyme, and and they they could uh, they could conclude that this model is uh, is uh, relevant and it's um, it maintains the cells as if they were culture in so this this model it, it's validated and it can be used in order to to see the, how the cells behave the cells from the patient behave and they can apply personalized uh, treatments. Thank you very much. <clears throat> okay, um, this is my, my paper, um, a highly efficient microfluid sorting device for synchronizing developmental stage of C. elegant uh, based of deflating electrotaxis. Um, uh, C. elegans is a model organized using biological studies. Um, many of these uh, require a large, a large number um, uh, of words synchronized in four larval stage. Uh, this article um, uh, discuss a cost effective <laughs> approach to performing C. elegans classification. Uh, the chief has several classification channels with specific angles uh, when applying the electrical file. Um, the stage of C. elegans are uh, dragged to negative uh, pole. Therefore, the word separate and synchronize is in a stage. Um, in this part, uh, the chip was designed with uh, 300 micrometer uh, uh, with um, uh, 120 micrometer height. The words mix in the same proportion. 
uh, add a nine a buffer to carry the chip before loading the words. Uh, 80 words uh, were placed uh, and after paste the chip with M9 buffer and electric file is applied. Only hermaphroditic words were used in, in all experiments. Um, okay. Um, uh, in this part, in part A, uh, Mago Larf, uh, Larf uh, uh, the um, electrostatic behavior, and uh, part B, uh, a trolling in 65 direction of, of different states of C elegance is indicating the electric file with uh, 10 um, a volt per centimeter. This behavior is stable with this technique. The words are classified uh, simultaneously. Um, in this part, uh, to ensure the strength of the electric file and not paralyze young adult, adults, uh, the CLNs were used uh, the electric file of uh, 6 uh, to 10 uh, volt per centimeter in use, um, in use, um, 85% of, of L2 and 90% uh, of young adults uh, to, uh, to the classification channels. And uh, in this part, to classify the ones L2 and L3 separate in the electric file with a different intensity in part A, if an electric file of uh, 6 volt per centimeter is applied, the separation of C elegance, L2 and L3, cannot be car carried out. In part B, um, when the electric file increased to 8 volt per centimeter, the channel style uh, had L L2 um, uh, 31% and L3 uh, 5, uh, 25%. And uh, part C, uh, when the intensity of the electric file increase to 10 volt per cent uh, centimeter, L2 and L3 separation was successful. Um, in conclusion, the electric file uh, uh, 10 volt per centimeter serves to separate L2 and L3, and this method uh, provides additional studies that are need for the synchronization of words in the stage. Thanks. Can you see my screen? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. The paper that I will post title Tennyson cells on the incidence of age related disease. In this work, they use a uh, stochastic model. Based on the saturation and lumen of aging cells, we describe the tendency of our child's spectrum of disease to appear in the future age of the person. In the models, in the, the models can be used to design optimal treatments that remove senescent cells. It is, it is Context senescence means aging cells. Suggesting that treatment, starting of old age, can help to reduce the incidence of the old pleasure disease. In the figure one, we can be seeing the incidence rate per 100,000 people. Your, 
it's all. In, in figure one, we can be seeing the incidence rate for 100,000 people. There is an increase in the number of people who are affected by the disease depending on age. In this case, uh, the available cancer and social treatment includes failure and uh, disease of the lung, EPF. EPF is idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. In the figure B, a, a P sub C is a physiological pa parameter um, that discriminate between the health state and the disease state. And at the same time, uh, this parameter in uh, relationship with senescent cells or aging cells. XC is the numbers of the senescent cells. And it, for one value of senescent cells, um, the physiological parameter phi adopt one value, treated value. P sub C is treated value. P figure D and E uh, show the different thresholds at which disease can appear in people depending on age. Mm, we, we can see that 45 or 50, excuse me, 50, uh, 50 years, uh, the persons, the people uh, can, uh, can have disease because the number of, uh, of the senescent cells uh, reach a critical value. In these in this figures, uh, uh, we can see one distribution of disease thresholds. In this case, this, this model has three parameters and in this case, two parameters. In, in figure two, in the, the model is proved using the um, database from the state health service in Israel in Israel and the exper experimental database is in, in black and the models described correspond to the blue point and a red a red line in, we can see the model is a, a, a good approximation to the reality database in the in, in the disease, for example, glaucoma, congestive health failures, and disease, Parkinson's disease, osteoarthritis, and, and another uh, disease, in diabetes type two, in chronic bron bronchitis, but in uh, in another case. The model, the model is not good for its crime, in, for example, in Alzheimer's disease or dementia, the model is not good to describe the, the experimental database. In figures, we can see the statistical of the, the, of the experimental database in, in comparison with the model's values in, in, in male and fem, in female too. In, in, in finally, in cancer, we we can see in, we can see figure four. In, in cancer, the model is very good to describe in different types of cancer. In, for example, oral cavity and pharynx, stomach colon and rectum, myeloma, and pancreas in another, and the, in, the, in the same way, the, the black point correspond to the experimental database, and the red and blue point 
correspond to the models. And cancer incidence can be explained by threshold cruising of the ratio of cancer growth rate to the model. In conclusion, this model is, is very good approximation to the uh, reality uh, database and is very useful to uh, suggesting uh, treatment for um, aging tra treatment of the cells. In this, in this page, I want to show the, the models used in this page, in this form. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, everyone. Um, in this case, I I talk about the, this paper uh, is uh, the enhancer structural and um, from human inducing stem cells of the related the cardiac disease under control of micro environmental nutrition system. Uh, this is an uh, interesting paper, but uh, uh, you can see in the, the graphical abstract uh, uh, the uh, summary of, of experiments and they use uh, uh, conventional uh, differentiation protocol and they use a uh, chair and EWP2 and after uh, uh, 21 days and differentiate uh, cardiac cities and the compare and the conventional to the culture and uh, different uh, macro devices models for a structure. Um, uh, do you remember that last week uh, I, I show uh, the different uh, structure for macro device for producing epoxia? Okay, and uh, after uh, compare uh, the physiology uh, reaction, the cells of behavior and uh, morphology uh, and uh, uh, count on uh, numbed on mitochondria in, in, in the, the three cases. Okay. Um, uh, wait. Um, okay. In in the figure one. Uh, uh, you can see uh, the, the different state of cells in the uh, control in the six well and the two the surface and the after in the uh, the chips and uh, is the different in in, in my experience uh, that it's uh, happened where when you use a different concentration of um, a structure of chip of uh, volume and the use of the different cell um, uh, culture strategy. Okay, and these uh, the different programs uh, you uh, you can see uh, produce a uh, image of in, in, in this case on the, on the threshold for uh, areas for uh, contractibility cells. Okay, and. That is compared in the into the chip and the, in the conventional method if the, how uh, the behavior uh, cells differentiate so, or in the a few days uh, culture and the maturation in in the uh, many days on a, on a future culture. Okay, uh, you can see uh, the different strategy uh, the fabricate of micro devices okay and uh, in in the immunofluorescence uh, you can see the the, the satiety uh, marker in, in in cells for uh, identifying uh, the, the different regions of different cells uh, 
quantitative uh, for uh, citrometric, okay? And uh, you can see the, the mitochondria uh, in these cells, okay? It's uh, compare the three methods of uh, how you uh, stress the, the, the cardiom cites uh, produce uh, more common than mitochondrial. Uh, structures in the cells or the oil cultive. Uh, in, in this case, uh, you can see uh, uh, they stressed it or uh, reduce the oxygen in the hypoxia. Uh, uh, you can see a uh, more produced uh, cones of mitochondria structure. Uh, after uh, uh, this uh, see uh, uh, resistance or resistance of uh, the ability of cells in depend of, of different structures uh, uh, into the chips on the, the convection of method of process culture. Uh, he uh, demonstrate uh, uh, the structure uh, is, is very important for a behavior on after maturization in the, the long uh, protocol uh, we applied uh, in in differentiation uh, hips uh, in, in this case. Uh, thanks. That is all. Hi. Hi. Um. Well, uh, functional and non-clinical similarity of ABP980, a biosimilar of trastuzumab, that is a therapeutic antibody uh, targeting HER2. Well. Fofo AKT levels was determined using a sandwich immunosay kit with immunoglobulin T1 isotype control. ABP 980 inhibits basal levels of PAKT, overlapping the three dose response curve support that ABP has similar activity compared with Gastusumab inhibition of the downstream signaling mediated activity uh, HER2 in the three lots that was tested. <clears throat> the binding of trastuzumab or ABP to HER2 can induce internalization of the receptor, removing it from the cell surface. HER2 expressing uh, cells were treated with pH rodo red with flow cytometry. Allowing a partial distribution, distribution, distribution analysis for red signal. These antibodies are internally, internalized into cells by increase in the fluorescent intensity of the red signal. In cells at 37 degrees. Immunofluorescence. A confocal uh, microscopy for a visualization of the receptor inter internalization are internalization as red patches in the cytoplasm of the cells. ABP shows similar subcellular localization and signal intensity as compared with the drastusumab blocks. <clears throat> Inhibition, uh, inhibici Inhibition of proliferation of gastric cancer cell lines, expressing high levels of HER2 and specificity of inhibition was evaluated 
using the breast, can uh, breast cancer cell line expressing low levels of HER2. The cell viability was determined using cell titer. Uh, the dose response cures for the inhibition of proliferation in gastric cancer cell line overlap, uh, supporting that similarity of ABP and Astuzumab, and of the load tested show no inhibition of proliferation in the breast cancer line, supporting that if specificity of uh, for HER2 overexpressing by ABP. And uh, the docetaxel is a taxan chemotherapy for that synergizes with trastuzumab in clinical use for inhibition of prof proliferation of gastric cancer cells. Uh, lots of ABP and trastuzumab were administered with, with docetaxel and effect on cell proliferation were measured and used to calculate synergia scores. And similar synergia scores were obtained for activity with docetaxel for all the lots. Well, that 